Welcome to the Jam Happy Hour. Hope everybody's having a beautiful, lovely, fun, wonderful, kind kind of a day. We have the next hour to hang out, maybe sip some lovely uh, butter wines and get to know Yon Mower a little bit better, which I have to say is maybe the best band name I've heard in a very long time. So thank you guys so much for jumping in and joining us for the Jam Happy Hour. How you doing? Great. How you doing? We're happy to be here doing great uh, what i love about this hour is we get to know you better you get to know us a little bit better and then along the way we get to enjoy some really great music and maybe some good wines too sounds good we're already drinking them so <laughs> okay well I'm then sorry. we're gonna get along deliciously then cheers to you um what i like to do is kind of jump right in and uh for maybe you know our jam fans that don't know you uh how would you describe your sound we are a we are a alternative indie doom pop uh, <laughs> outfit from Asbury Park, New Jersey. Uh, yeah, I think that about sums it up. I, I, I'm going to say in my doom pop. My 28 years in the industry of programming uh, multiple formats and radio, I've never heard doom pop, and I want to really get into that more because. It makes my ears tingle when you say that. But can we jump right in on our first song tonight? What would you like to play for us to kick things off? This is, uh, this is called 16 Minutes. It's on our newest album, uh, To Each Their Own Coat. Excellent. Thank you. Cheers. Welcome to the Jam Happy Hour. as it is, I know you should not put your digits inside the little Tone. We are off and running here in the Jam Happy Hour tonight uh, with Yon Mower. Come on, that's a great name. Who came up with that? Uh, I did. I did. We uh, <laughs> when we started the band. I'm going to take credit for that one. I mean, we, you should. I mean, I, when I saw it on the call sheet, I was I had to say it like ten times over. I'm like, why has no one come up with this before? This is amazing. <laughs> so, uh, please take me down the Yon Mower path. Well, Yon Mower started eight years ago. Uh, with me and Biff, we were a two-piece up until pandemic. Uh, mm. It was just drum and baritone guitar and a big stack of amps for me and just a bunch of fuzz pedals. And um, that's where the doom pop came in, um, was all the fuzz we were throwing out. Uh, <laughs> and so we wanted to pick a band name that was pretty much the opposite of what the music sounded like. So we were going to do Yawn, but there's like 40 bands with the name Yawn. So Yawn Mower came out and... Um, I think it was available. The domain was avail available. So you have to think about those things these days, yeah. though. You do. You have to go in and look at the Instagram name and the TikTok name and the, and the domain. And so Yawn Mower. Yawn Mower. And we got the dot .com. It wasn't the dot .net. You know what I mean? So that was, that was it. And I remember saying, yo, I just got yawnmower.com. And he was like, oh, okay, cool. All right. That's, that's it. That's it. So. <laughs> Hi, Bev. How you doing back there? 
Hi. <laughs> well, that just worked out beautifully. I mean, yawn mower. I mean, do you realize that it like makes you smile and it makes you like kind of be like, oh, that's funny and that's like it's clever and it's kind of like the music also at the same time it's also kind of like poppy and kind of clever. Like, was that meant or you're just like this is a great name we're going with it? I don't care. Yeah, uh, I mean, I could tell you we meant to do it, but no. Um, <laughs> it just came out because we both thought it was yeah. We just both thought it was a good funny name that would hopefully get some attention and then uh, between our two personalities and just the writing style it, it fit perfectly so and we had a bunch of other names that we thought of that now like wouldn't make any sense at all oh, for the band. Oh, are you going to so, share with the class? Nah, we'll, we'll, we'll. <laughs> we'll save that for a happy hour at the tasting room in Napa sometime. <laughs> sure. After, a few, more yeah. after yeah. a few more. All right. We'll serve up that butter. Then we'll get on um, the couch. Yes. Bring it on the couch like a good therapist would. Um, right back here, as you can see in the picture. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned in the pandemic, it went from a two-piece to clearly a room full of amazing, talented people. In a time that we were all isolating, how did that happen? <laughs> we we made um, we kind of made a pact because I mean this is this is a group of people that have known and played e with each other in other bands gotcha. for a long time. Um, so we kind of made a pact during pandemic that like if we keep our social circle small, we'll still be able to get together every week and practice. Because uh, that's the most important thing for us at that time sure. was to keep making and playing music. So yeah, and then we, me and Biff, you know, we decided once shows basically stopped, we were like, all right, well all those voice memos we've been recording, <laughs> it's time for them to get, you know, um, written up. And, you know, yeah, we need to do that. So. So we started writing the new record, and then we also said, like, if you if you look at like our earliest record, it's just it's literally just guitar and drums and vocals and some percussion, and then it gets bigger and bigger every record until this one, which is like a full blown thing that we always talked about doing. Um, so that that's when it came out. We we're like, yeah, this is the time to do that record. And then after it was done, we were like, well, we can't go back to a two piece. There's no way we could do that. <laughs> You're like, I, I like having my friends around me at all times. So, you know, I think everybody had that really great idea in the beginning of like, we'll, we're just going to be a, a bubble unto ourselves and everything's going to be fine. Uh, who was the first one to get COVID? Show of hands. Uh, it was me. It was me. It was Biff. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was Biff. It happens. It. Like, you know, <laughs> just the drummer. Oh. It's always drummer the drummer. Stuff. Always the drummer, but I love it. Yeah. You know, it's like you, you take a situation in, and you make a good out of it, you know, and obviously as you continue, like, it's hard to believe it's been three years, but now like everybody's grown, the sound has grown, the music has grown. And like you said, this is what you're used to. This is what you want to put out into the world. As Yawn Mower, you know, in 2023, um, what would you like to play for us next to keep the, uh, to keep this, the vibe going? This next song is also on the newest record we have. Uh, it's called Elevation.
thought that we would dance around like we should. Elevation at its best. Never thought that we would dance around like we should. Elevation at its best. Will this nine to five please end? Stabbing pencils around my hands again. No direction for this exam. Real confusing. thought that we would dance around like we should elevation at its best never thought that we Before we get too far into the hour, thank you again so much. Jan Mower is here with us tonight in the Jam Happy Hour. And from uh, two guys hanging out making music to all of these beautiful people around you, will you please introduce who we are hanging out here tonight with in the Jam Happy Hour? Absolutely. Yeah, let me, let me take this mic off for a second. Let me do, the, let me do like the game show host thing. Do the this thing. Is Pam. This is Pam. She's on vocals. Hello. This is Dana. <laughs> He's on bass. Hello, I'm on bass. <laughs> This is Biff. You already met him, but he's worth meeting again. Hey, oh, I'm back. Hey, this oh. is Nicole. She's on violin. Hey, oh. Rudy. Rudy. Hey, how you doing? I'm Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> Rudy. <laughs> Everybody's a chant. Give a shout out Bill. To Bill is our sound guy. He's the one who made it all happen. Nicely done. Good, yeah. Good evening. <laughs> I, have we met before? No, never mind. We'll talk later. We'll talk later. <laughs> How great is it to be able to hang out, you know, with your friends and make like music that makes people feel good? It's it's <laughs> the neighbors are big fans. Yeah, my neighbors <laughs> my neighbors do love it. They always ask us. We have a practice room in the back and they're always like, "Who's there last night? Who was that?" And then they'd see Aww. me walk in and they'd be like, "Hey, who's back there if you're not back there? Who's what is it?" So they're they're stoked about it. That's a big plus when you That's a huge plus cuz if like not it would be doing. very awkward. It could be really bad. We've all been in rooms <laughs> where like, you know, 15 minutes into the practice the cops are there and you're just, they're just like, "Get out of here, kid." Sorry, you know. <laughs> um, but no, I mean it feels we had no idea that this was going to happen. I mean, this all kind of just was like dominoes that fell and uh, the whole time we were making the record so that so to have like, we asked Pam to do the backups on, on the record. And then when we started doing this, it was like, do you want to play? Do you just want to sing with us? And then Nicole's <laughs> played with us before as a two piece um, on and off. And she's played on our record. So we're like, do you want to just play with us? And so it, it's great. I mean, it's, it's, been, it's been really fun so far. And you know, we did a tour last uh, November. We mm -hmm. did a New England tour for seven days. We're going to California on Tuesday. Four of us are going to California. Um, I better but, say it's got to. It, now that you are this larger group, the logistics have got to be a little out of control as far as like moving everybody around. Yeah, I mean everybody gets the invites to everything, and if everybody can go, that's rad. But if you know, if if some everybody's got prior engagements or sure. other gigs Life. or other stuff, I mean everybody's always firing on some cylinder. You know, it's a two piece. So we can always, you know, <laughs> <throw it> up. <laughs> yeah, Dude, this is the, the date. 
Well, uh, I'm definitely getting a lot of 90s vibe. I'm getting like good mood. I'm getting, you know, probably like a lot of what people need right now. So I want to jump in on our third song this evening uh, really quick. And then I want to kind of dive into like the influences and where the sound is coming from, you know, after this. But what would you like to play for us next? We're going to play an older song of ours back to the two piece. Uh, it's a B side and we brought it in to add seven people to it. So this is it's Love all it. nonstop. Excellent. Well, Yawn Mower in the Jam Happy Hour. Enjoy. Ragtime in a polka style. Dancing with you could be worthwhile Apparently we've ruined the crop No time to think, it's all non-stop Show me your rolls, too close but not You left us sitting in a parking lot Apparently We've ruined the crop No time to think It's all non-stop Twist of lime Drinks with you Could be a good time Apparently We grew in the crop No time to think It's all non-stop music is that is that it can always be interpreted um you put it out as one thing and then like fans and listeners we hear it as something completely different um how does that sit with you knowing that this is not like i'm hearing something completely different than what you guys put together i mean my immediate response to that is i'm just happy if people are listening to it that's that's a big yeah i'm i'm, I'm happy for that but um what did you think? Like, what, let me. Well, what? I tell you, I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting big 90s vibes. I'm getting, um, you know, I, I, I always look for the story in a song. Um, I, I, a long time ago, when I first got into this crazy industry, I was told that women hear lyrics and men hear music first, and then it switches. So uh, I think maybe mentally, I've always kind of stuck in that as a, as a programmer and as just as a music fan. So I always dig for the story. Does it match my story? Can I apply it to my life? Do I, does it make me feel a certain kind of way? And I'm getting very like Dinosaur Junior. I'm getting, like, you're taking me back to college and just a carefree kind of life of like, yeah, I'm dealing with my crap, but it's like, it's not that bad. That's great that you said Dinosaur Jr. because that last song, Elevation, that we, the one before the last one, that mm -hmm. was our version of Dinosaur Jr. covering The Cure's Just Like Heaven. <laughs> okay. So that was, that was the blueprint for that one. And, you know, it's not as awesome as either of those songs. But, I mean, that was the blueprint for that. Um, I mean, for, for me personally, lyrics are a huge part um, uh, of a song. I mean, I'm not a super flashy musician, so I can't rely on that. So I got to, you know, try to make the, the lyrics interesting mm -hmm. for me and for, you know, for the song. So that's a big part is like, is, is if people say that, that if they compliment that, then um, 
the lyrics, then I'm stoked about that. And then I'm lucky enough to be with all these awesome musicians that right. will just rip, you know, behind And bring it, it to so, life. Yeah. There's so. a lot of layers, I mean, for sure. But I'm definitely, I, I mean, obviously in Elevation, I got, you know. Well, that's, it, that's, that's what's cool about the newest record we put out. It's eight songs. And we, we recorded the bones of it in Philadelphia during, like, deep, deep lockdown, where, like, it was canceled every other week because somebody got COVID somewhere. So we did like these, these initial tracks, the drums and the guitars, and then we did the vocals. And then I handed the whole thing off to Biff and he had it for a couple months. And his cousin, Nick, had, shout out to Nick, um, just uh, built a studio. So he had it for like two months. Two months? Three months? Six months. Six months? <laughs> so like when I got the record back, he's like, yo, I think it's time for you to listen to it. It was just like a whole other thing. There were all these other layers Wait, that they had so been working you, on. So you passed it off for production? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had we had the nuts and bolts of it, which you know could have been the record, but then it was just like, nah, we have time, we can't play, why rush this thing? So um, then we did all the vocals, like me, Rudy, and Pam did the vocals at my house, and mm -hmm. you know, and then passed it to him, and then we finished it up, we split the bass duties on it, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, when it came back, I just was like, I don't know what to expect from this, and like I just went and sat in the practice room with headphones on, just in the dark. And just listened to it, and I was just like walking in, like, holy sh okay, cool. that's so good. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I've ever heard of a project kind of come together like that. I mean, I'm sure it's happened before, but to actually pass it off and be okay, go play, and then months later sit down with it and be like, okay, what'd you come up with? <laughs> like, it's, it's actually kind of, I mean, I know that we've worked together a long time, and it was kind of just a, it was a necessity because of COVID and us being locked down, but then also sure. it was kind of nice to just like. Because your immediate reactions to things that people do can sometimes be, like, too premature. You know what I mean? Like, if he did something, I might be like, I don't like that. But then three days later, I might be like, no, I do like that. Now well, I get it. I, yeah, that, that's so, a good lesson in life in general. You know, so it's kind of like, just do your thing. And there were a couple parts where I was like, yo, we got to talk about this or that. And But it was, like, minute, the amount of things. Two, two things two. on the record that we took off. Two things. How do you guys Biff just shouted together? out two things. So he just wanted he just wanted to know it was only two things. <laughs> it was just the two. Out of all of them. Yeah. Which almost kind of answers my question before I even said it. Uh, how do you guys, since it is a large group now, and you go from like two people making decisions to seven, eight, nine, you know, plus, how do you guys gel in the decision making process when it comes to the final product of the music that you're gonna put out? Uh, well, we haven't written anything together with all of us. I mean, the plan is that me and Biff are still going to write the music, mm -hmm. the majority of the music up front, and then we'll take it. Because we, I mean, before we just wrote that record together and added every, everybody came in to play the parts that we wrote. Sure. So, um, and everybody's been cool about it. Like, just, you know. Right? I mean, We've all seen like, movies and documentaries. <laughs> we know how this is going to end. Don't, don't, don't look at them. Yeah, they're all very <laughs> happy. <laughs> they're all extremely happy right now. And we all knew Bill. Bill does the sound. Bill, uh, for those of you who couldn't hear that off mic, uh, they all work in other bands together. Well, not together. They all work in other bands. So they have a lot of different musical things going on at once. They get to come together and, and perform this music. And uh, we're certainly glad for it here in the Jam Happy Hour with uh, Jan Mower, which just gives me joy every time I say it. Um, based out of New Jersey. Yes. How yeah. much do you think that upbringing influences your sound uh, what i think a ton I, a huge, yeah i think biff, it's we huge, can't hear you i love he you said, biff said biff said a ton um, <laughs> a ton i'll just do the game show thing again um yeah <laughs> biff biff said a ton i think new jersey is hugely influential into who we are and 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 what we i mean maybe not what we sound like as much but just as us as human beings like mm -hmm. i think if you're from new jersey and if people who know people from jersey then right you kind of know and um yeah, I think I, we, we've been playing in Asbury Park, which has a huge musical history. Totally. Um, I mean, we've been, we all grew up kind of around that and then either lived there at one point or continue to live there just to be a, close to the music scene there and to, uh, you know, meet other, meet other people and be a part of the community there. So, um, yeah, I, I, I love being from New Jersey. I don't know, people, people 
talk bad about it all the time, but I don't care. It's a great I don't think spot. people talk bad about the blueberry capital of the world. What are you talking about? <laughs> I I think that most of the bands from our area, no matter what genre they're playing, there's this surf tinge that's hidden in there, no matter what. You think? That I feel like we leaned into. And there's also the comical part of being from New Jersey that we also <laughs> lean into. Uh, I think <laughs> it's always been important That's for us to be label. equal parts funny as we are serious. Right. Yon Mower, le- you know, lends itself to that name too. So it's like 100%. You know, as soon as you come and you saw us play, you, you knew we weren't taking ourselves too seriously. So we were there for <laughs> a good time and we're hoping you, you know, do the same. Well, I think there's a lot of uh, too serious in the world right now. So what you have is a self-described spazzy surfer rock. I think I read somewhere along the way. I think there's a place for that 100% uh, in, in, in the world uh, that we all live in. Because you can, you can kind of lose yourself in the music a little bit, which is great. Which is what you know, that, For me, that's the sign of a great song. If you lose time and you just kind of get into the song and all of a sudden the song ends, you're like, oh, you know. That is a cool moment. I haven't really pinned a name for it, but I, I know the way it feels when I forget my own life and just get into the song. And it, it's a beautiful thing. And you guys are, are killing it uh, because you're, you're you're telling great stories and it's also fun. So well, that's the um, thing. I think I've always I've always liked being on that edge of of, uh, of having humor in the band, but then also mm-hmm. being serious as as you can be in terms of your love for music and just like right. making music and producing it and releasing it and playing. So like, yeah, people always said that they're like, yeah, they're like goofballs, but they're like super serious and they're really hardworking. And you know, and we are, we're a very hardworking band. We do a lot of stuff. We're always trying to produce stuff and make stuff. So, but yeah, we do like to have a good time and laugh. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, Absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I I do want to jump into what's coming up. What's the plan? Where are you projecting, uh, you know, for the rest of 23, 24? It's going to be here before we know it. But uh, now is a great time to jump in on another song. And I would love to know what you would like to play for us next year in the Gem Happy Hour with Jan Mower. The next song is a uh, a more mellow number. Uh, It's also on the new record. It's called Message Board. Thank you so much, you guys. Enjoy.
got a 70s vibe in that one. I like that. Boz Skaggs. Oh. Little, uh, little Todd Rundgren. Okay, then. Well, that's just going to lead me into the next question of musical influences. Like, what did you grow up listening to? Like, I always find it very curious. And you might have to game show again for me. Yeah, Here, definitely. Mike, sorry. Uh, but um, first concerts that you wanted to go to that you were super excited i'm going to this show not anything you got dragged to at a theme park or you know whatever what was the first concert you wanted to go to and went to first concert everybody hear that question yeah. mm -hmm. all right um uh anybody know it right away yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> literally everyone uh, literally york philharmonic and <gasps> tori amos was the first ticket oh. that mom bought me <laughs> the queen Yes. Mine was Saves the Day, Blink-182, and Green Day. I hear a lot of Blink-182 influences in those drums. I can understand that, sir. That is why I play, for sure. <laughs> Radiohead for me. <gasps> Mine was 98 Degrees. Can you hear the influence? Wow. I, I, wow. Same. I'm kidding. 98 Degrees, but at TRL. Have you yeah. guys never had this yeah. conversation yeah. before? You're bonding yeah. over Nick Lachey. Thank you so much for helping us, you know, get to the next level of fandom. <laughs> by that, I, I would, I would say for me, it might have been Wu Tang Clan and Rage Against the Machine. That might have been the first one that was like mind blowing. That, you know, like, oh, it oh, should okay. be. This one that is mind blowing could get wild really fast. I. Um, uh, I'm checking my facts really quick because, yep, yeah, no, I got it right. So, uh, you know, Rihanna recently had a child not too long ago, about to have another one. So the name of her son, the first one, uh, came out today. And she named him RZA. Nice. <laughs> after the lead singer of the Wu-Tang Clan. Is it RZA? How RZA. Is it RZA. Wow. RZA. I love that. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> so you and Ri apparently... Have a little something or, in common. Yeah, I mean, we talk a lot, you know. <laughs> like it's, it's like a constant text theme. I mean, uh, Fred, yeah. Me and Reed. Well, it, it circles me back around. I think those early musical influences really do kind of set the tone, you know, for your life and what you do and what you like. Like, I grew up listening to a lot of Motown in the house with my mom. Uh, she was also big in the top 40s. So, like, Casey Kasem on the wall size unit was always playing. And then I think my very first concert, I know my very first concert was um, Madonna, The Virgin Tour, opening act, The Beastie Boys. Wow. Nice. Wow. That was what, so, Lic License to Ill era? License I guess, to Ill, right? yeah. Fight for Your Right had just come out, the whole thing. So just I was. Pouring beer everywhere all over the crowd. It was fantastic. Beer. And I was like in middle school. But I remember <laughs> being blown away by them. Obviously impressed with Madonna because she was like the biggest thing on the planet at the time. But like, who is this little band? And here's the cool thing. You know, when you're out and you're performing and you're touring and you're there are people having this experience with you. Do you ever stop to think like you could be influencing for many years to come? That, that would. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, we, we played a show in, in Vermont. It was a Bennington, Vermont, it was a small college in Bennington, Vermont over the fall. And every, every, like, we played our set. They didn't know who we were, but we went in there and there were maybe 40 to 50 kids there. And they just yeah. all were doing like their own little like peanuts dance to our, to our, uh, you know, I want to know Brown. what a peanuts dance is. Like Charlie Brown, you know, you know, when they all like kind of, they get together and they do the, yeah, they kick up dust. Yeah. It's very it was Wednesday like, like. It was, yeah, kind of like that. But they, they all started doing that. We're like, they were all having a great time. They had no who had no idea who it was. So hopefully we influenced all of them to join their own bands or start their own bands. You know what? What is the plan moving cool. forward? Uh, it, it, you know, is it more live shows? Is it honing your sound? Is it you know kind of like fine tuning what it is that you're going to be creating? Like what is next? What does 2024 look like for Jan Moer? I mean, we're next week. We're going to California. We're gonna we're we're doing the California tour. It's our first time playing shows out there. So we'll be in Berkeley, San Jose. Sacramento, um, San Pedro, Oceanside, uh, Gardenia, and Santa you're, Monica. You're doing all the places. We're hitting it. I mean, we, we sent out a thousand emails and we just like, you know, we tried to do it as DIY as possible and, and you know, we landed it. So we landed a week. So we're going out there. And it, then at the end of the summer, we are playing uh, the See Here Now Festival in Asbury Park. 
um, which is huge for us. It's a big win for the team. Um, Hometown. Kill, killer. Who's, uh, Foo Fighters will be there. And, uh, Who? I'm sorry, killer. I've never heard of them. The, the Foo Fighters? <laughs> the Foo Fighters are also on the bill. Just a little no. band. It's just a little, no. you know, them and the, the Killers. Maybe you know the Killers? Do you ever know the, uh, maybe. The Breeders. Oh, okay, now you have my attention. <laughs> yeah. The ladies um, are coming. So that's huge. So we got this tour, and then we got a bunch of shows over the summer, and then we just cap it all off with that, which is, is going to be rad. So, um, yeah. You're going to so have the bugs so bad. You're, like, not even going to want to stay home. You're going to be like, okay, where to next? <laughs> yeah, well, we're already planning something for the fall. So we, we were always going through at, at some point. You know, either somebody's releasing something or, or playing something. That's what it's all nonstop means, pretty much, that <laughs> last, last song we played. So, yeah, and yeah, so, embracing it because you all have other things going on too. Like this isn't just it. So it is very much a uh, probably a, a comedy of trying to put all the schedules together to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, and you know we we make accommodations when we need to, but otherwise everybody's pretty stoked to be doing you know playing these shows, and um, we just find other time to do what we have to do. You know, we'll all. We'll all be releasing records either independently or with a band mm -hmm. on, in addition to Yawn Mower at the end of the year or the beginning of next year. And then I don't know when we'll start working on new Yawn Mower stuff, but um, probably next year. Or Everything's fluid. It's a beautiful thing. What is the best way to keep up with what's going on, what's new? Like, what, plat what is your preferred platform? Like, how do you like to keep in touch with fans or just make new fans? Instagram's probably the best one. I get, I it's mean, a great totally, aesthetic. Your page is beautiful. Thank you very much. A lot of that is, Biff, most of that is Biff. Biff. Biff does all our videos. Dana does a lot of camera work for us. And, and um, Biff's girlfriend, Melissa, also does a bunch of stuff for us. So, like, we ha everything's kind of in-house, too, which is rad uh, when you're talking about, yeah. like, creating content and making videos and doing all that kind of stuff. Biff, you want to you add to any of that? Or, or? Yeah. I do the videos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a director of aesthetics here at Young Miller. <laughs> Dana and I went to college for film together. Um, oh, wow. Okay, well, then you left that out. So, yes, yeah. that's that's a very good thing. It's a feather to have in your cap when you're creating the aesthetics for the band. Um, yeah, I, I feel like that's why we've all slowly migrated into this small group. Uh, you know, after 20 years of playing music, you find the people who have a ton of strengths and are fun mm -hmm. to be in a van with, and you don't let them go ever. Ever. So, Not stalkery at all. I preach that to any young band watching. Never break up. You could go on hiatus. You could hide for years. Just don't break up. Name recognition is important. Um, yeah. You know, we're all in a bunch of bands together. We all help each other out. Dana's done artwork for Mike. Mike's done guitar on someone else's record. I mm -hmm. play drums on Dana's record. You know, ev everyone here has helped someone else out here. So this isn't the first time. Just... The, the strongest batch of people that I know, so I don't let them leave my side. <laughs> that is so fantastic. Round of applause for our little therapy session. That was fantastic. But it's also very true. I mean, it's like in this world where everybody's like coming and going and everything's like ADD and 30 seconds of this and grab, you know, grab my attention or I'm gone. When you actually can, you know, find people that you vibe with and you can, you can enjoy each other's timing like that. And it's like a little effortless. Yeah, yeah, a thousand I mean, percent. Even, Grab onto that and don't let them go. Yeah, <laughs> energy and output. I mean, it's. I hate doing nothing. I don't like sitting still. I don't like right. sleeping. I like creating stuff. <laughs> and these are these are my people here. Um, well, we need to talk so about your sleep. Uh, that, that's important. <laughs> uh, but right now is not the time to sleep. I would love to jump in on our fifth song this evening here in the Gem Happy Hour with Yawn Mower. You guys, if you're enjoying the music or if you're enjoying the wine, uh, please follow along and support and add to playlists and uh, little things like that go a very long way. Uh, so if you enjoy the music, please add them to your daily. What would you like to play for us next? Uh, this one goes out to all the people with sheds in their backyard. Sheds. This is an entire song about um, a busted ass shed. Uh, <laughs> what's what's the, what's the uh, I should probably censor. Is this a censored kind of environment? You're or good. No? Can I say whatever? Okay. All right. That's good. <laughs> Knowing going forward from here. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. This is about a busted ass shed I saw in New Jersey one day driving around and uh, the lyrics came right there in front. And I was just like, yo, Biff, we're going to write a song about a shed. Like, all right, dude, I'm in. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Why not? All right, enjoy here in the Gem Happy Hour. Let's go to the shed.
It's very visual. I can see it. <laughs> I can absolutely see it. It's like uh, a, a cool way to bring up a very, not a group memory, but I think something everybody can see and think about, like in their own stories, whether it's driving through the South or driving through the Midwest or driving through New Jersey or driving through wherever. Like we all take those country ass roads where you see something and you're like, that's busted. <laughs> Shit is leaning. Shit's leaning. Like, I don't know what happened there, but. And it doesn't have to necessarily be a shed. It could be anything. Like, on the way down here, there was a moving truck that had blown out a tire. So we just were like, oh, shit is leaning. So Aww. it's like, you know. I mean, they were towed. They were safe. They were fine. But, like, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. I now have visions of you guys, like, busting out in a song on road trips because you're like, shit's leaning. So. Yeah. These cars are on fire. Just, there's just, like, massive destruction behind us. But, oh, shit's leaning. But. Do you, that, when you when you come up with these songs, you come up with the ideas, you come up with the words, you know, something maybe it is just a sentence that kind of sparks a song. Are you looking for a shared experience or is it just like something that comes organically? A lot of it for me is just like a line like that comes up and it just makes me laugh or I, I think it's interesting and then I'll be like, Yeah, I need to I need to use this for something. And Shed was one of those songs that you write in like three minutes, which <laughs> is just it just kind of pops out and you're like and then you, I, me and Biff work really quick together on that kind of stuff. He's like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. this, this, this. So it was like, all right, cool, that's that's done. Um, so it was always fun. That, and that's always a fun one to play live when it was the two of us. So now to have, you know, the band and then Nicole shredding on the uh, the violin that whole time, too, it just makes it even bigger and more fun. So It's interesting because, like, a, you would not think that a lot of people would think of strings when it comes to, you know, a doom pop song, now that I'm using the, the, the phrasing. Trademark, by the way. Doom trademark pop, that, trademark. if you have not already. Nobody's um, allowed <laughs> But obviously, you have this, like, great, uh, uh, these layers in whether it's, you know, Pan's vocals or Nicole Strings or, you know, everybody, like, pulling everything together. Do you start to think about songs in that multi-layer approach now? Or are you still kind of thinking about it in that, like, two-person bones and then how can we make it bigger? 
with the songs that we have, it's uh, the older songs that were the two person bones. Now, yeah, yeah, that's what we're thinking about all the time because it's like, how do we fit all? The, there's nothing for anybody to play. Like the newest record, there's a bunch of different parts for people to. Oh, you play that lead. You play this part. You play this part. But the mm -hmm. other one, it's like we're figuring it out. Like we're just like, yeah, just rip a solo there, and then just <laughs> you know, because because we have complete trust in like, yeah, Nicole's definitely gonna rip a solo on this thing. So like, we're <laughs> we have complete trust in, in that. Um, but yeah, it's just like kind of rebuilding the songs in a way. And um, Eric, who is also plays with the band, he didn't play with us tonight. He said, I remember at one point, he's like, it's literally one note. The chick just plays one note that whole time. So you can do whatever you want. I'm like, yeah, it's open. It's like free. I mean, not completely open, but sure. you know, we'll, we rein it in. But Biff's good at that stuff too. He'll tell you a little about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel like Everyone who plays with us is on the record. None of them played the instrument that they play, except for Pam sang and Nicole played violin. But otherwise, like my cousin Nick, who recorded the record, played bass on one, but Dana played guitar on one. Rudy recorded mm -hmm. the vocals. I played bass on one. Mike played. So it was, it was it was a little bit of a free for all, and we had some some trust in one another but when we go back yeah. to the old stuff it's like we've changed whole chord progressions at this point to work with what we have because the option of yeah. adding three four harmonies is now there so instead of you know going with the obvious thing or going with the weird thing sometimes it's like you do the opposite you know the weirder ones we've dialed in so that we can make them more harmonious or the, the weirder, weirder ones, ones. i like, like how you could go in yeah. any direction you want, you know, make make noise for two measures because that's what it calls for. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it'll it'll be interesting to to write with all of these pieces in mind now instead of record and then figure it out. It'll be like you know we we know exactly what tools are at our disposal. Yeah, it's like going from being an only child to having like four step brothers and sisters. The Brady Bunch. <laughs> It's the Brady Bunch. It's the Brady Bunch of music. And it sounds fantastic. Thank you so much for jumping in here tonight in the Jam Happy Hour. If you're just jumping a little bit late, uh, Jan Mower is joining us from New Jersey this evening. And um, the band has definitely uh, grown and progressed, and the music has grown and progressed. Uh, and obviously, the industry has changed a lot in the last few years. So now you can record anywhere. You can publish anywhere. You can do anything anywhere, honestly. So how does that reflect how you guys are going to make music like moving forward is it when the the muse hits or is it like okay we're going to sit down in october and we're going to map out music how how are you seeing it going forward i think a little of both i think you know i've been if i come up with some riff i've come up with riffs so you know in the last year that i'll send the biff on a voice memo and just be like hey man right. think about this one and you know we'll just start stockpiling them until yeah until we're like hey let's just focus on this and get in the room together and kind of do the bones of some new songs. So we'll, we'll definitely keep doing what we did. I mean, we're, you know, we were always sending voicemails out. I, say, you, voice like, voice I text memo. myself all the time. So you're basically, you're texting each other. All the ideas. Time. Yeah, yeah, we're always recording stuff. We Put this in a folder. Long list. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, our time is quickly running out. Oh my gosh, we have like 10 minutes left and this is going by super, super quick. And I want to get back into some music. So what would you like to play for us next year in the Jam Happy Hour? We'll have time for two or we'll do one we more? We got two. We can we can get in two. If you want two, we got two. We can make it happen. Let's, let's do two both, yeah. All right. We're going to do this one's called Broken Filaments. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. picture up close falling down several flights of stairs cancellation for your broken toes you can come back in a couple of days negotiations through one. 
one hell of a night Scribble hard on the bill Ink is flowing, signature is smeared Paper towels for the spill Quick support if it's what I can get Either do it or don't From success you are exempt Broken filaments for all your failed So what you're saying is when there's a broken filament, I can turn my mind off for a while? Yeah, if that's, <laughs> if that's what you need to do. That song was about a night we had practice and every single thing that we were supposed to do that night went wrong or didn't happen. And uh, I'm like, this is, this is another one of those nights where it's like, yeah, this needs to be lyrics for something. So all of those are literal. I love that. Point, Honestly, when you point. can take like a, a string of things that don't feel great and turn it into something pretty cool, I think that's a total win. Yeah, B I mean, Biff got ink all over himself that night from <laughs> writing his writing his name on the bill for dinner we had. I mean, he lit all over the place, and they they the waitress laughed at him. She came over and laughed, and we're just like, can we get a towel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we like, we're mouth. writing a song about this, ma'am. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. You know, you got to take those moments and you got to make them into beautiful things. And obviously, you guys are having a lot of fun doing that. Uh, we've got a couple more minutes left. I would love to uh, wrap up with one more song. I We can totally squeeze it in. We've got the time. Right. So what would you like to perform for us lastly here in the Gem Happy Hour? This is our, our barn burner um, to go back to the sheds. This one's called <laughs> Convenience Store. Convenience Store with Jan Mower here in the Gem Happy Hour. Enjoy.
never any fucking place to park Shadows moving from bench to bench Smoking cigarettes and talking art What do people all do for their money? crooked and driving reckless headed to the convenience store got a sandwich of coconut water i got a walk helicopter jones spinning ceilings above the mattress drifting off to the danger zone i'll go anywhere you wanna go burner out of uh, Jan Mower here in the Jam Happy Hour. Mike, Biff, thank you so much for bringing us along on your musical journey tonight. I love that you guys all found each other and brought this all together because it just seems to get bigger and better. And if anybody is in California, catch this tour. They start next week uh, and it's, you guys are all over the place in California. So uh, they can find all the dates on your Instagram, yes? Yeah, Instagram's the best way to, to get all the updates for that. So, yeah, we're all over. We're driving all over. Come and see us, please. And thank you very much for having us. This was really fun. Absolutely our blast. And uh, if you guys, like I said before, if you like the music, if you like the vibe, if it made you feel a certain way or just maybe you forget about the stress in life, add it to your playlist. Uh, share it with your friends. It goes a lot further than you think it do. It's not just a click like people are watching and monitoring. So uh, support the music. Support um, the coming vinyl. together. And thank you for being here with us tonight in the Jam Happy Hour. Jan Mower. Loved it, loved it. Thank you very much. And we'll see you on the road, hopefully in Napa soon, too. Cheers. Yep, cheers. Cheers. Salud. Thanks, everybody. Salud. <laughs>